Hello everybody, this is Alex from Hardcoin Guides, bringing my guide for Dead Space 2 on Zealot Difficulty. Today we are doing Chapter 13, entitled Government Sector. So this is going to be like close to the, the finale of the game, pretty much. We have this chapter go through, we've got like one other big one, I think, and then Chapter 15. 15 might have been the one that was the big one I'm thinking of with the, with the Regenerator. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Uh, but chapter 13 is pretty fun. It's not super long. Oops, sorry if you heard my mouse clicking there. I did. I don't know if I told you guys this or not yet, but I did end up buying a new mouse for this specific computer. And now it's a bit more loud than usual, but um, it is what it is. So if you hear noises, that's you know typically probably why. Oh, I'm trying to remember what the hell we even do in this chapter. I remember it being a decent chapter. It's just been a while since I actually, you know, played through it and everything and and what have you. And since I've actually, you know, edited it because, but, well, that's funny because I edited it on Thursday. But, you know, that's that's so far back from now, in my mind, that I had forgotten. Uh, nothing really important going on right now. You know, just sell off some or semiconductors, you know, buy whatever you need. Typically, I end up at this point in the game, since we're pretty much near the end of the game, uh, I'm... Pretty much going to rely solely on buying more ammo more often than just wasting all of my money on power nodes to be specific. So basically what happens is, you know, I'll buy, if I have like 30,000 or whatever, I'll buy like two power nodes and then for like the last 10,000 I'll just buy ammo for anything. Oh yeah, it's this part. This part's pretty fun. So this area right here, you're going to be, you know, attacked with an onslaught of enemies of course. The first guy that's going to appear is going to be an elite, or I mean a super slasher, and there's a puker across the way. And of course, you know, the slasher will probably end up trying to run at you first, and will probably end up getting next to you first. So take him out, you know, knock off his legs, and then take him down. And then after that, you know, take out the puker across the way. Don't let him get too close, and then of course the exploding one should spawn to the right. Uh, another puker. And the best advice I have for this section right here is if you can time it you could always use stasis to maybe slow down the explosive guys or maybe cut off their arms and then use the explosive pods that they have and just throw them back at the enemies or um you know you can always just grenade launch or just do what i'm doing here and pretty much just attack them as they come through and the other piece of advice that i can give is stay in this specific room that way you can avoid potentially getting attacked from behind or even possibly attacked from like a specific side of you because the moment that you run out there is the moment that you're pretty much just open for getting attacked from practically all sides. Now, once you think that everybody is gone, that's a good time to check and see if, you know, maybe there's some leftovers or whatever. Um, typically, with this part, you finish off one wave, and then after that you have like a secondary, like super small wave of uh, lurkers that kind of spawn in. And you'll probably hear them every once in a while when you're playing. Um, but they're there. They just take a bit to kind of show up. That could be potentially my problem. That could be a potential problem on my end of Dead Space 2. You know, my game doing that. I, I don't know why I said that so weird. That, that could have been a problem with me. I don't know. Uh, but what happened was these lurkers didn't start spawning until after I did the circuit breaker thing. And I think there's only just a couple of lurkers, so it's not not a big deal to deal with. And these are, of course, the super versions of them, so yeah, it's going to take a bit longer to kill them, but they're still lurkers. And let's be fair, you know, lurkers are not that bad unless they're in groups, right? You know, one to two lurkers at a time isn't going to be that much of a threat. Now, if they had maybe three or four or even five of them, little bastards running around, that'd be a different story. So here comes another cool part i don't remember if i edited this or not I, I i think i did i think i edited this part to have a section that cut out some of the the cutscene part of it but this part's pretty neat because you're pretty much just running away from you know earth gov trying to shoot you down i'm pretty sure it's earth gov at this point i mean who else could it possibly be right so you know you're just outrunning them and with that part right there where they, you know, where they catch you and they're, they're shining with live shots on you and they're going to go shoot you. Um, obviously, if you stay there, you're going to get shot and killed. 
but you have plenty of time to run to the door and it's just not that big of a deal. Well, that particular section in general. Sorry. Um, so, after that, you're going to, of course, shut the power down. And then you're going to have to fight another horde of enemies. And what I do here is I just try to stay, like, behind the door as best as I possibly can. I'm trying to stay away from going outside because I don't want to get, you know, ambushed. And we have a little stasis thing right here that we can use for advantage and just, you know, wallop these guys down. I use the grenade launcher just to basically get rid of the little spores. And then across the way is going to be one of those, you know, respawners, those necro... No, they're all necromorphs. What the hell am I talking about? Basically, the, the guy that brings them back, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. I forget what they were called, but we I pretty much just call them like the spawner guys. They pretty much just spawn in new enemies and such. But yeah, just stay in this room. Try to give, you, give yourself some cover. You don't want to try to get yourself, you know, out in the open and get attacked by anything. And here's a fun little thing you can do these little guys right here is... You can use stasis to essentially, you know, stop them from, well, attacking you. And on top of that, you can slow them down fast enough where you can stomp them out or, or whatever you need to, uh, to take care of them. I did that a lot in Dead Space 1, but not really much in Dead Space 2 because they changed... They changed them in Dead Space 2. They, they don't exactly act the same way that they used to act in Dead Space 1. And what I mean by that is they 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 seem like there's not a ton of them at once. And of course I I've, I've explained this before, but the way the you know the spore guys, you know, when they latch on to little parasite guys, the way they work is they can only really realistically do a ton of damage to you if there's like a bunch of them on you at once. And in this game, they seem to have knocked that number down. I mean, to be fair, they still do a bit of damage to you if they all cling on to you at once. But by the time that, you know, they're about to cling on to you, you're probably already knocking them all off. So it just almost seems like it does nothing half the time. Compared to Dead Space 1, though, that's just, you know, how I see it. Because that's how it seems to me, I should say. Not exactly sure if that's exactly 100% true. But, you know, from my playthroughs, it always felt like that was the case, that the Spore guys were a bit more lenient in this game. Just a bit. So, coming up here, you're going to get a checkpoint right about here. And you're going to see me, of course, you know, cut the, or edit the video and get that little split. And the reason why is because I died a lot of times. I died a couple of times. And speaking of a couple, uh, there's a, I don't know what you would call it, like, more of like a humanoid necromorph. I guess, like, a soldier variant or whatever. He's going to spawn to the right, and he'll probably chase you down, just shoot him down. He's a lot weaker than a regular, like, slasher necromorph is, so it's not that bad. And then across the way, I think, was a puker. And then uh, upon entering this door, uh, I'm going to stay behind, of course, once again, I'm going to stay behind the door. This is where a lot of my cover usage starts to kind of come in handy, where now you finally have the ability to sort of uh, use doors and such to your advantage a little bit more often than not. And yeah, I just waste I waste the spawner immediately because you don't want him getting across the room. You don't you do not want him to get all the way over there and then start spawning in more guys. And then just, you know, let him running around on the you know, on the loose and and well, wreaking havoc, of course. And, you know, uh, the thing with this area is they these enemies tend to spawn from the right and left. They seem to alternate a lot between each other. So just make sure that you're poking your head out, you know, just to see where one could be keep your eye on especially the left side because they tend to kind of get a little sneak jump in there and that's never good so once you feel that you've pretty much cleared out most of them uh, that's when it's probably a good time to you know start running inside and just checking for things make sure that while you're running through here you check your back just in the off chance that one of them might spawn in from behind you because that can happen and if, if you don't time your if you don't time the spawning rate correctly that could happen there's not too many enemies there's not like an infinite amount of them anyway so once you're pretty much done with one pack you can run in and usually be pretty much fine until like a certain point so because you know you had that slasher guy that was back there that spawned and i think he might spawn after you start making way through but still you know not really a bad area if you just kind of learn where they're going to come from and then from that you stay behind the door, 
keep yourself within cover and you'll pretty much be okay with that so that's my best advice it's going to come apart in a few seconds that's going to be kind of a bit a bit comical i guess looking back at it now i thought it was annoying as shit but uh ended up you know kind of being a silly little gag that happened to me um, i should have dropped the line racks here yeah because there was force force ammo and i forgot to drop the line racks that i didn't even notice them to be honest with you i didn't notice at all i think maybe until eventually i saw them oh well i guess i healed and traded out for a big health pack but this guy right here he's like right in the center of the camera when i'm trying to work on the bench and i can't see through him so i tried knocking off his legs because i felt like oh he's gonna get in the way i'm gonna knock him off and all I could do was just take care of the legs. And then, you know, after that... Well, actually, I forgot about this. Yeah, the divider shows up right in the corner. Um, I believe he might show up after the node door, so just keep your eye on this. And, of course, I completely somehow missed the stasis because the game just wouldn't let me have it. Also, with dividers in this game, when they do split up after you've done enough damage to them, they will, of course... Well, yeah, they'll split up. What am I talking about? They're going to split up, and then once they do that, you know, usually a pretty good way of taking them out completely is just a grenade, la grenade launcher shot. That's usually what I end up trying to do just to, you know, make things much easier to deal with. They're a lot weaker in this game in comparison to, to Dead Space 1, I feel, because I remember in Dead Space 1, they take forever to kill, but here they don't. If you don't have a grenade launcher, you know, force gun works. If you don't have that... I would suggest using stasis and then just stomp them down. Try not to waste your plasma cutter ammo too much, you know. That's kind of the key aspect here. So this room, you're going to end up walking pretty slow because it has that mucus, mud, you know, pool of just whatever. Basically the stuff that games like to use to, to slow you down whenever they're trying to stop you. Whether it be to make the game more challenging or just to annoy you, I have no idea why they do it anymore. Uh, but... Or maybe just to give you like a sense of tenseness that they're trying to get you, you know, scared of what's to possibly come. Or in this case for Dead Space 2, it's probably just to make it harder for this fight, if I had to guess. Because you have to deal with stalkers. But the thing is, once you get to this area where you're near the power battery thing that you can see, that's when the stalkers are pretty much just going to start spawning around. And they're going to, of course, try to stay a little bit farther away from you. And when they do that, you know, you just spot them, shoot them down. Kill one, take his hand, shoot another one. Rinse, lather, repeat, that kind of thing. And then you have a puker across the way that's going to spawn you. You're pretty much, you're pretty much done when you see the puker come up, because once he's there, uh, it's usually a pretty good sign that all the stalkers are pretty much gone, and and dealt with. So, and I, I guess there's like a secondary one over here, and I light him up. Unless that was the same one from earlier, which I don't think it was, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Just you know, watch your left and right. Make sure that you know that uh, you either get the puker on the left first. If not, you know, that could have been the same one. But basically, just take out the first puker. And if there really is truly a secondary one, because there might have been, uh, that's what I'm thinking there was, then just look straight to the right, and there he should be. Because typically, a lot of the time, when it comes to certain areas in the game, they tend to kind of spawn guys in the same place. That's always just kind of been a thing. And sometimes they spawn randomly, too. It really depends on where your positioning is. And speaking of crap that just goes wrong, well, to be fair, this fight went pretty well, but I have no good segue for that. Uh, pretty much just the battery was just being a dick to me. Couldn't get the damn thing out. I don't know why. It's just game problems. It's the usual. So I come into here, and I think either I'm hearing a pod, which, yes, I am, because there's one right there. <coughs> Sorry. Um, either I didn't notice it, or I tried to get through it without taking um a hit i think i tried doing it without using ammo i mean but that that didn't work of course because well it never does so yeah and now we're going into the laser section oh boy i think we already did yeah we already did that brute multi-wave fight thing i think we did, did that already so this area is pretty pretty all right it's not too difficult uh, you can outrun the lasers, that's kind of the point. You're going to have a couple of these babies spawning in from pretty much all sides. But do be careful when you're fighting them, though, because you're going to have this guy that's crawling toward you. And you got to just, you know, keep on your toes with them. I would say 
keep one of the the babies like you know just knock off the head but keep the body alive or the body you know still there and don't blow it up to kind of take with you but nah you, you're better off just not you're better off using it on the crawler guy and there's gonna be a lot of crawlers in this section too and usually every room you come into is gonna have a guy that's gonna spawn in the vent and it's probably gonna have a crawler so just keep that in mind like they're not gonna do it for every single room but the idea is that they're more likely probably going to do it, and that's something you kind of want to keep, you know, keep an eye out for. So, yeah. And when it comes to the babes, I just tried to use pulse rifle stuff to save ammo for plasma cutter, because plasma cutter ammo is very, uh, very important to have. And I, I've mentioned that before a ton, but just in case somebody happens to watch the video, you know, and not have watched, you know, potentially the other chapters before, or maybe I've heard me say that yet. Uh, yeah, basically, I, I, I truly believe that plasma cutter ammo is your saving grace in almost every situation when you're dealing with just the regular or even the stronger variant of enemies and what have you. Basically, just save it for like the bigger necromorphs, slashers, pukers, leapers. <laughs> save it for them especially because leapers are just terrible to deal with. Pretty much, if you just want to get a, a limb chopped quick, Plasma Cutter is, you know, practically your way to go. So, that's what I recommend, personally speaking. And then, up here, you're going to, of course, use Kinesis on the bridge to knock it down. And then after that, uh, there's going to be two Super Slashers, I believe, that spawn in. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled for that. They don't spawn in until, I think, after you knock down the bridges, because, yeah, the game wants you to make progress and then fuck you. That's kind of how it works. Ooh, sorry. My, my stomach is acting up. Oh, it wasn't a super slasher. It's just a regular, like, old-fashioned, easy necromorph to take down. There should have been two of them, I thought. Yep. Okay, there's the super slasher. There's the real super sand. I thought there was two of those, but oh well, it's fine. They're still necro slashers anyway, it's not a big deal. Man, I'm trying to think of what this next room is going to entail. I remember this part being a bit difficult though. Is this the other horde mode fight, the one we have to fight all the babies and the puker, or am I thinking of the earlier chapters again? That's my problem with Dead Space 2, or just Dead Space in general, is I end up forgetting a lot of which chapters have what in them. Like, what happens where and when and how. Oh, no. This is the Horde fight. Oh, jeez. Okay. I thought we already did this, but now we're doing it. Okay, so basically what I do here is... Obviously, I'm just, you know... Waiting these guys out. Waiting for them to spawn in. I'm trying to knock this little bastard and trying to kill him without blowing him up. So that way I can use him for fuel. Pretty much to throw at, you know, somebody else. A weapon, not a... Ignore what I said. I'm trying to say words. So... This place basically works with a set spawn type, and typically I think everybody spawns in usually about the same place. And what I'm doing here is I'm just taking out, you know, most of the the main slasher guys, the ones that are just running toward me first. I'm trying to take them down as fast as I can, and then after I take them down, I'm trying to use their their arms as weapons. You want to try your best to save ammo on this particular mission. That's kind of the idea that I'm going for here. If you knock off a guy's arm, use it to your advantage to spike the other guy, you know. If you, you've got a couple of those stasis things over there you can you can pick up if need be, throw them at a guy and then use melee if you need to save ammo that way, that works. There's gonna be a spitter guy right there, watch out for him. He's just a basic level, you know, regular ass slasher, but still. Uh, they, they have the ability to spit at you, and that's not cool. But pretty much, just stay back here, and stay to like the right-ish corner, but just keep your eye and your ears like on the left side, because they tend to spawn every once in a while. They tend to spawn on the left side. They typically spawn more so in the back and on the right, than they do usually anywhere else. At least for me, they did. But then, you know, um, after a while, eventually a super puker... He's going to pop up, and he should be close to the last of the enemies that we have to deal with here. This part used to be incredibly difficult back then because it was just so many guys at once. But the key trick 
is take out anybody that's like running toward you. Take out any of the higher priority guys, you know, like a puker, a, a super slasher, any of the any of the fast, speedy slashers. Take them down, and then use explosives. Uh, use their arms against each other. You know that kind of thing. Oh god damn it! It's starting to it's starting to lag. Hopefully it's not too bad. I'm gonna do a quick sync check to make sure that everything's okay. Pick up, and then pop throw. Oh, yeah, it's getting laggy. Pop. There we go. Okay. Hopefully that's still synced up. I don't know. If it's not, then I apologize. I might have to resync things. But right here, I pretty much use the stasis barrel to, of course, you know, take these guys down and just essentially use melee. There's gonna be a guy coming from behind you, so just watch that. Um, he usually spawns after you've already taken down like the two main dudes here, so just keep your eyes peeled for that. Not too difficult. Uh, and again, just use the stasis thing to kind of clean house. I'm gonna go ahead and just move my thing in here, see if that helps it. So coming up next, oh my god, it's starting to lag again. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not. I'm not recording. I'm not re-recording this again. I'm not doing that shit. I don't care. I'm not. I'm not doing it. But anyway, you're pretty much doing about the same thing you've done before. You're pretty much killing the enemies. You're taking their arms. You're taking their their explosives, their arms, whatever. You know, whatever you can find, and you're using that to essentially, you know, take them down. Here, now, I'm gonna do some real quick. This is pissing me off. Alright, there we go. Hopefully that's good enough. I don't know. Maybe it is. Alright, whatever. Oh, sorry about the clicks, but my, my my thing's starting to kind of lag and I'm getting kind of scared. Because last time it did this, everything got desynced and I got fucked up. So, I'm not... I don't want to re-record the entirety of Chapter 13 again. Just because of a fucking desync. Man. Just because of a goddamn desync. It should be okay. But I don't know. It's just, it's having a hard time. I don't know what's going on. I've I've tried so much to clean this fucking computer out and make it work better, but it just, it just struggles. But anyway, yeah, basically, pro tip, just stay in one, one corner, keep your eye on both left and the right, and there you go, and just, again, knock them down, grab their arms, throw them at each other, try to save ammo the best you can. Use plasma cutter when you need it, when you need to chop somebody down, especially their legs. And you should be fine. And then the second wave is not that bad in comparison to the first one. It doesn't last nearly as long. Probably because the devs kind of figured that it'd be bullshit to have it go on for so long. Uh, so they thankfully gave us a way out. They, they were like, okay, we're going to have the second wave not be that bad. And even the third wave, which is nothing, is just one brute. Isn't even that bad either. So I was just grabbing things just to kind of preempt because I want to make sure that I have... All the right tools for the job before the brute spawns. Oh, motherfucker. Come on, you bitch. Why do you gotta do this to me, man? I'm just trying to watch this video, for fuck's sake. Whatever. So, yeah, throw stasis at the brute, and then after that, you know, you're gonna, of course, just shoot him from the sides. Well, shoot him in the arm. You know how it goes. You've been there, done that. He's not that bad. He's not that big of a threat. And then you're going to get a nice big old uh, semiconductor from it. And there you go. Blow him off the stasis thing that I had. And then shoot him in the back. Delim his ass. And yada yada yada. Oh yeah, this part. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was being a little silly there. So I almost kind of forgot which part that was from. But thankfully it's from this one. But yeah, I'm not going back and re I'm not recommentating this. I'm not doing that again. I'm not fucking with this. Not today. If it's desynced, I apologize. I'm gonna try my best to not make sure that it's desynced. I'm gonna try my best. After this, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to edit this crap and figure it out. Just be on the safe side. I'm gonna do a double sync check real quick. So let's see. Um, once I once I click on the door, that's when I'm gonna say door, door. There you go. Okay. Just to just for future me to kind of figure out if everything's okay or not but yeah after that you got yourself a nice store you can go to just sell all your stuff that you got buy some new shit you know upgrade your stuff this is about close to the last time you could pretty much upgrade it's not exactly the final time you can upgrade but for the most part you know it's not a bad idea to upgrade and just do what you can now 
just put all your points and put a lot of your points into the um, into power nodes. And just buy as much as you can without going too far. And then once you have like ten, fifteen thousand, you know, credits left, just buy the rest into like plasma cutter or something. Something that you rely on heavily, and then just yeah, go with that, and then upgrade just anything really at this point. The only upgrades that truly matter, in my opinion, are upgrades to, like, Plasma Cutter and stuff. Like, getting Plasma Cutter upgraded fast and getting your secondary gun, if you're using one, upgraded fast is usually a pretty good idea, in my opinion. Um, I don't upgrade the suit very often, just because I feel like it's kind of pointless. If you if your weapons do enough damage and you're fast enough with your Kinesis, you don't really need to upgrade your suit that often to realistically have to worry too much about health, you know? And plus, at this time, at this point in the game, I already have, like, so many health packs that I'm pretty much just a walking tank, almost. So, yeah, try to try to save as many of those those bastards as you can. Alright, so we're getting into the next area that's going to be a little bit more difficult eventually. Uh, this is pretty much just a precursor to what's, what's to come. This area is going to start with the regenerator in the next chapter. And right now, what we have to do is we'd have to do the eyeball section. And I decided to leave it in just because, just to show you guys, well, you know, what I do. So, for those that aren't aware, one, this is going to hurt like a motherfucker. I'm just telling you that right now. Fair warning. If you don't like needles, you don't like eyeball pain, then yeah, this is going to hurt. So, pretty much, um, you know, you're just holding down X, A, whatever to make the the thing kind of go down and if it's red that's bad if it's blue that's basically where you want to kind of aim it at pretty obvious stuff um but what i was doing there was i was just holding it down just getting it as near as close as i possibly can there's a certain threshold after it eventually goes in i'd say once you start getting like really close to the eyeball it's just when whenever you see the blue light just keep the needle in one position and whenever you see the blue light light up keep tapping it just don't like don't hold it but just keep tapping it because if you if you hit it on red you know there's a chance you might fuck up of course with this section you got to get really close to the eyeball anyway um but you know still um just if you feel like you're getting close no matter how close you are unless you really know exactly how close for sure you are uh, I'd suggest just tapping it, you know, when you see blue, tap, you see blue, tap, there you go, and that's it, so take care, everybody.